Uh, Bob will get to work on removing a series of eight contamination covers. These covers protect the ceiling surface on Node 3 where it mates to the space station. Here you can see Bob stowing one of those covers in his trash bag. And the main goal here is to get Node 3 ready to be unberthed from the payload bay so that it can be safely mated to the space station. While Bob is removing the covers, and Nick will be releasing a heater power cable that's routed from the space shuttle over to Node 3. This is going to provide heater power to Node 3 from launch until its birth to Node 1 port. Nick will take this cable, coil it up, and stow it in the tool stowage assembly, uh, which is a toolbox that's outside of the shuttle. Here you can see Nick uh, at that TSA or tool stowage assembly. From there, both crew members will head back to the station and they'll pre-stage two EVA bags in preparation for EVA number two. This will allow them to go straight to work uh, when they come out of the hatch for EVA two. Bob and Nick will then translate up to the MT or mobile transporter uh, where they'll begin work on Dexter. Uh, Dexter is a Canadian robot that has the capability of changing out components outside of space station. They'll be removing the ORU temporary platform which is used to stow these components during a changeout. Uh, this will make way for the new enhanced version of this platform uh, that can provide heater power to those components. It will launch on ULF-4. Here you can see the crew members releasing one of the five bolts that's required to remove the OTP from Dexter. Once they get it removed, they'll put it onto one of their EVA tethers and they'll translate to the zenith aft side of S0 and there we have a special tray called the HAB tray that has a convenient set of handrails that lend itself to tying this OTP down. One end of the OTP will be fastened with a bolt that's captive to OTP. You can see here in its uh, final resting place. Uh, and then the other end will be stowed with an EVA tether that's rated to stay outside for an extended period of time. You can see Nick cinching that tether in place here. From there, both crew members will move to their final task for this EVA. Uh, Node 3 should be in place at this point as it was relocated from the shuttle payload bay uh, using the station robotic arm. Uh, Bob's task will be to mate a series of power and data cables that were pre-routed on 17A. He'll be connecting them over to Node 3. Uh, his first task will be to move, remove a series of thermal blankets uh, that protect the connectors on the Node 3 side. Here you can see Bob removing that blanket and he will stow that into an EVA trash bag. He'll then remove a series of caps. Uh, you can see here that we've actually tied the caps together so that uh, they don't have to tether to each cap individually. As you know, in EVA we want to tether to everything we handle uh, to avoid it uh, inadvertently floating off. Bob will then start to mate the series of connectors. There are two sets of cables. There's the channel 1-4 and the channel 2-3. Uh, these represent redundant strings that are going to be routed from node 1 over to node 3. Here you can see both sets put in place. Uh, because the node 3 cooling system is not in place yet, uh, we won't be activating and we won't be using these power cables at this time. And we'll wait until everything is put in place on EVA2 uh, to begin the activation process. Uh, therefore, Nick will be connecting what we call launch to activation cables. Uh, these are heater cables uh, that are going to provide heater power to node 3 uh, to keep it thermally controlled until activation during EVA2. These cables were launched in place on node 3 and were held in place by a series of clamps. Nick will release those clamps and then mate the cables uh, over to node 1. With that, Bob and Nick will start their cleanup process uh, they'll gather all the tools that they brought outside and translate back to the U.S. joint airlock. Uh, that will complete EVA-1. Uh, they'll have one day in between EVA-1 and 2 uh, to, for preparations. Uh, for EVA-2, the main purpose of EVA-2 is to route the ammonia lines that go from the lab to node 3, this is going to provide the cooling for node 3 so that activation can begin. Uh, we'll now uh, step into EVA number 2. We'll roll the video for that. For EVA 2, both crew members will again start out at the U.S. joint airlock. 
they'll have their bags pre-staged on EVA-1 and they'll get right to work. As I mentioned, the primary task here is to install ammonia jumpers that are routed from the lab to Node 3. These jumpers will provide cooling to Node 3. However, for thermal protection, they need to route um, a thermal blanket around these jumpers. So their first task will be to install that thermal blanket. You'll see that show up here. It looks like a, a large Y-shaped blanket. Here we have some training footage of Bob and Nick installing that blanket. As you see, this is a, a pretty large blanket, but uh, these guys have done a really good job of uh, finding a good way to pack this in the bag and pull it out and secure it to the space station. Uh, they'll use an EVA tether called an adjustable equipment tether to secure these uh, before installing the ammonia jumpers on top of it. You can see Bob securing his end. And now you see the blanket is uh, pretty much in place. Uh, Nick is getting his end secured. Their next task will be to route the four ammonia jumpers that route from the lab to node three. As I mentioned, these jumpers will provide cooling. Here you can see Bob routing one end to Nick. Nick will connect his end at the US lab. Bob will connect his end using a fluid quick disconnect on node three. Once that's complete, they'll close the thermal blanket around all four lines. In order to provide adequate clearance for a module that's going to be arriving on the final space shuttle flight, um, there's a particular routing path for these lines that we want to make sure we adhere to. So the crew will be using a gap spanner, which is a special EVA tether that can stay outside almost indefinitely. And they'll be using that to secure the MLI, or the thermal blanket, and the ammonia jumpers in place. Finally, the crew members will open up one half of the ammonia cooling system that requires throwing two bales on fluid quick disconnects on the lab side and two on the node three side. The other half of the system, or the redundant part of the system, will be activated on EDA three. Once this is complete, they will put the thermal blankets back in place and then head out to Node 3 for some Node 3 outfitting. Uh, Bob's first task will be to install a keel pin cover. Uh, the keel pin is a structural attach point that holds Node 3 into the shuttle payload bay. He'll be putting a thermal cover on it to prevent condensation from building up inside of Node 3. He'll then translate to the Nader common berthing mechanism on Node 3, where he'll open up a flap that will allow camera views of the cupola when it's being birthed to this port. He'll also open up a series of four pedal covers. Uh, these covers protect the ceiling surface on this port. Here you can see Bob opening up one of these covers in training. <coughs> From there, Bob will continue installing thermal blankets. Uh, there'll be a total of four thermal blankets covering trunnions. Uh, these trunnions are used to secure node three into the payload bay for launch. Again, the need for these covers is to prevent condensation from building up in the module. Here you can see Bob installing one of the covers in place. Uh, there's a section that covers the trunnion itself and then an area that we call the scuff plate uh, also needs to be covered uh, that's directly underneath that in this view. So there's two on the aft side and two on the forward side. These covers are going to be secured using Velcro and what we call quarter turn fasteners. So the quarter turn fasteners are a special bolt that will provide a grounding path in case any charge is built up in the uh, thermal cover. While Bob is doing this, Nick is going to be installing a series of handrails. These EVA handrails could not be launched in place because they interfered with structure in the orbiter uh, payload bay. He has a total of eight handrails that he'll install. Uh, once he gets these handrails installed, it'll create a nice path to his next work site. Here he will be installing a non-propulsive vent. Uh, this vent will be used to depressurize cupola before it is relocated.